So last week, we started talking about delays. Is that good or bad for developers and publishers to put on some delays as we have seen, especially in this COVID period, a lot of game, at least 51 this year, plus at least three, four, five next year already put on delays. So is that a good thing or a bad thing? And that's what we're already talking about last week. And as you said, we love to digress a lot. So since Korean couldn't make it this week and Phil is gone, actually, I hope he's fine. I'm sure <laughs> he's fine. He's probably right just still asleep. <laughs> so I guess we'll have to digress a lot to fill up our hour. <laughs> So, okay, so, so we talked about something like Star Citizen, which you said, I mean, I don't remember off the top of my head, but it should be 2012 was when it first was announced. Yay, or? 2012, Robots Industry. <laughs> so do you think that delays can actually kind of kill hype for a game? Do you think, because I think a lot of people now oh, kind yes. of, it's, it's almost become a meme, right? Like this game will never come out. <laughs> Of course, I mean, it's not unseen to have games in development for eight or ten years, but usually you don't hear about it until the very end and it's uh, introduced at the E3 and you wait, what, one, two years before it's released. This one, they started the campaign in 2012. So imagine you paid for a game in 2012 and you won't play it until 2023, 20, 24. You can play it in early access. Hype is gone, goodbye. <laughs> that's, that's gone. You're, of course, you can come back at the game, you know, like uh, like I go back to um, uh, what's the name, Star uh, Starfair, you know. Uh, but that's some games like this, which I come back to, you know, from time to time because it's it's fun to to play for a couple of weeks. Uh, but that's just because you have nothing to do and you don't, don't want to spend some time. But no, of course, the hype for this is dead and buried. <laughs> It was it was a thing at some point, but now it's gone. Do you think that maybe part of the problem is is it that uh, when you have a game that's delayed for so long, if it is if it does get a lot of hype, but it doesn't come out, do you think maybe sometimes that hype gets siphoned off by other games where other developers are like, okay, I'm gonna make maybe not a whole game like it, but similar to it, like for example. Uh, with Star Citizen, I, I've seen people not completely compare it to, but uh, what's that other game that was really popular on Xbox? Elite Dangerous, Elite. right, exactly. Elite. So in Elite Dangerous, you can't do everything that you can do in Star Citizen, obviously, but you can do a lot of the exploration and stuff like that. And so, you know, Elite Dangerous kind of maybe took one aspect of Star Citizen and siphoned that off. And then... Uh, was it No Man's Sky took some concepts, you know, the procedurally generated or whatever, and pulled that off and whatnot. So do you think that in some ways... Adam, I think delivery is coming. Yeah, there's a delivery it's coming. Safe. So I'm going to have to pop out for a second. And you're just going to have to chat to yourself oh, while no. I pick it up. It's okay. It's only going to take a, a second. Uh, it's just cat food. <laughs> <laughs> They're delivering <laughs> cat food. All right. So I'm going to pop out for a second here, but real quick. Do you think that the delay sometimes has an impact on, or do you think that the delay other, allows other people to siphon off that, you know, some of that hype? So Go. have at it. <laughs> so now I'm just talking to myself, which is absolutely awkward. And uh, just to answer each question, which I will have to <laughs> answer again when it comes back. Uh, yes, I think if your game has been announced way too early, you will have a hype for a few months, maybe a year if you're lucky and it's a very great game, and then uh, your fan will lose patience and go to something else. And uh, I think that's actually what happened on Cyberpunk 2077 is because this game has been delayed a few times and it should have been delayed for another six months, but there was such a big hype that I think, in my opinion, publishers said, we have to release it, otherwise we're going to lose our fan base. And which was a massive mistake, of course. But at the same time, if they released it 
in six months or in another, another six months or a year, would they have made the same amount of sales that they did? Because I think they made a massive amount of sales. There was a giant hype on this game. So that's, um, that's a question. And uh, I wish I could ask Adam about it, but he's still not back. So Korean, uh, what do you say? Do you think it was delayed or the overhype that killed it? Uh, you, uh, if you're talking about cyberpunk, I think the overhype for me. I think the overhype put so much pressure on the publisher to release it that, you know, they were like, there's no more choice. We, delayed it, we already delayed it once or twice. I think it was twice at this stage. Uh, our fan base will not accept the fact that we delay it uh, another time. And at some point, you know, you have to take the blizzard way and say it's going to be ready when it's going to be ready, guys. And that's it. And you can see here uh, how it went out on PlayStation 4. And it was a catastrophe. Uh, you played it, you were so disappointed because it was horrible. You played it on PS4 or uh, computer. Because computer, I heard a lot of things, but... PC, of course. Okay, so even on PC, you were disappointed because the massive, uh, the, the biggest complaint I heard about was on PS4. That the game was so catastrophic that, you know, they have to actually give back money after a week and take it out of sales. And I can't recall if any other game has done that. I don't know if you have one on top of your mind, but I can't recall any game which had to. Uh, pay back the players during the, uh, the player power fantasy. <laughs> I had Cree in the, <laughs> to, to, to talk with me, so. Oh, okay. So we were talking about the uh, Cyberpunk 2077 and uh, what killed it, was it the delay or the overhype? And I was saying that I think because the game was delayed twice the, and the hype was so strong on this game, the publisher were felt pressured about releasing an unfinished product when you know it completely it was a catastrophe of course and we know uh, we know on ps4 uh, they had to actually pay back pay back the players and uh, Korean was saying that uh, he played it on pc upon release and it was a big disappointment so this and i was saying so they released it on it and of course it was terrible but they still made a massive amount of sales if they took six more months or maybe a year to finish the game would the hype would have just died down and even if the game was complete would would they have made the same amount of sales that's a good question i mean i would say they probably would only because it's cd project red and of the success of the witcher so in that sense i think the if the hype had died down, I think they actually probably could have been kind of safe with that. Um, other publishers, I don't think could pull that off. I think I think there I think that was purely the goodwill of uh, The Witcher Three that would have kept them alive. Uh, but yeah, I probably. Well, that, okay. So Korean says here, given the number of problematic systems, I think it would have taken a year to fix, probably longer. Well, now it's supposed to be in a playable state, and it's roughly a year later, so that's probably a fairly good assessment. Um, <laughs> the only thing I wouldn't be sure about is why weren't these bugs picked up earlier? I mean, what was it about their testing that they hadn't, would they just not have enough time to fix these bugs or did they just not do sufficient testing and, and they needed the player base to do that for them? So, oh, okay. So Korean's yeah. saying management pushed them I, to release it. Okay. I, I agree with Korean. So it's a hundred percent a time thing. Oh. No, okay, it was on Bloomberg. Yeah, of course, the developers were, they, um, yeah, they knew that their games was bugged as hell. It's just, you know, the there was marketing and sales and saying the hype is as, you know, the, the wave, the hype is at the top right now and we have to release it now if you want to maximize the sales. And and here you are supposed to do customer service, not sales. So they, they uh, so went into the wrong industry or... Whose fault do you think that is? Do you think it was originally the higher ups saying, we want this game to release by this time, developers, you need to find a way to make it work? Or do you think it was somebody who actually had some connection with development 
they were told what they needed to do and they said it should take us this long and then it ended up taking them longer than they initially expected and the higher ups were like nope you told us it was going to be ready by this time so we're holding you to it and who do you think was more responsible for the i think two that? people are fun there's two people at fault here first and the fault is on the players themselves everything has to be done right now Come on, you're not gonna die. You can play other games for a year before something is finished. This game is like hundreds of games every year. Leave time, you know, for the developer to finish their games. So players who want everything right now, that's catastrophic. Really, seriously, that's a problem. Second problem is uh, management, you know, because as I said, this game has been re uh, delayed twice already. Maybe they were a bit pissed off. Okay, you delay, made us delay twice. We don't want to delay three times. Okay, fair enough. But at the same time, releasing a game which is an, in beta, it's just shooting your own foot. So management doesn't see, you know, they just see the numbers. They just see the projections of sales they can do. They don't actually have the boots on the ground. They don't see what the game looks like, what the product is. And that's, I think, there's a problem of communication here that uh, the management should have an eye on how uh, finished the product, the product is, because at this stage it was not, absolutely not, not even 90%, not, uh, not 80%. Uh, I don't think they are very happy to be able to, do, to have to pay back the PS4 players. That I'm sure they were very pissed and they knew they made a mistake. And that, yes, yeah, so maybe a communication problem, too much pressure, too much... Uh, Bethesda would have this problem with Elder Scrolls 6 being on the... Are they even working on an Elder, Elder Scrolls 6? Oh, yeah, they announced it. They announced it a really? uh, couple of years ago. Yeah, they have a <laughs> they have the reveal trailer, but it's really just like a, a camera panning through the clouds, basically, and then you see some mountains, and it plays the Elder Scrolls theme, and it says, you know, Elder Scrolls 6. So that's very interesting we have Korean here saying i think bethesda will have this problem with elder scrolls 6 being owned by microsoft do you think they will be forced to release in 2023 or maybe a delay bethesda is working on very thin layer of eggs here because they completely blow out and nearly died with fallout 76. did not do well they they cannot absolutely cannot uh, miss, uh, mess up Elder Scrolls 6. If they mess it up, it's finished, they're gone. That's, that's, uh, see, that, that, that's how it is. So they are backed up by Microsoft. They have the financial power to wait and to develop their game further. It's not like they are an independent studio anymore. So they are not pressured by numbers, even though management will always put pressure to release earlier, but they don't have this, you know, um, fear of if we don't release by this date, we're in the red and we're gonna die. No, they don't have this problem now. They are owned by a powerhouse. So we, if, they release on uh, if they release too early, that's entirely their fault, absolutely. And maybe you said it was already announced two years ago? Two or three, I don't even know the exact time frame, but it was it was announced a while back, yeah. Far too early, <laughs> far too early. I don't know when they start working A lot of people were this. saying that. They were like, because everybody knows they're going to make it, and then when they release it, it literally just said Elder Scrolls Six. We don't even know, you know, it's not Skyrim, it's Regional. not Oblivion, it's just Elder Scrolls Six, no subtitle. And so, uh, yeah. And then it, it showed a landscape, and that was it. And so people are, I think, speculating that it might be uh, somewhere near, uh, was it High Rock or? Uh, was, I, was I fear, Hall? I fear that uh, they're gonna pull people from uh, Tezo, so you know the Elder Scroll Online, which is releasing. It's working well, and it's releasing add-ons pretty often. Actually, I think there was one recently. Uh, they did, uh, I don't really know, know the regions, but uh, I think they did the region quite recently. And uh, I think they are the best people, best place to work on Elder, Elder Scrolls 6, but they are announced 2018, release 2024. Release date, January 2024. Yeah. 
Okay, uh, that depends on the amount of teams they have working on it because they need the expertise of the guy working on Tezo on because they're already in the universe. They are already have most of the assets, I believe. Because that's the thing, you know, like with Star Citizen, they are working on Squadron, uh, Squadron 42, which is a single player game and uh, Star Citizen being the MMO behind. But the assets are the same, you know, like when they develop something for one game, they develop it for the other one. So what they develop for Tezo, they may develop or, you know, take it for uh, Elder Scrolls 6 as well. So somehow they can maybe shorten the development time with this. I don't know. What do you think? Well, ESO, is that, is that Bethesda or is that DICE? That should be DICE, right? Weren't they the ones that did ESO, which is why it looks pretty different from the other Elder Scroll games? Oh, is it? Yeah, I, I know they definitely did the online aspect of it. I think I think they might have designed the entire game. I'm not sure. So Bethesda um, is not involved, though? I mean, they own the IP, so they're involved. But I think DICE was the ones that predominantly put it together. So I don't know how much, uh, how as far as development, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how involved Bethesda, uh, Zenimax or Bethesda. But yeah. Bethesda is still involved. I think yeah. DICE is owned by Zenimax too, though. So I'm not quite sure. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so it says, uh, let's see, possible Skyrim DLC or mods from DICE 2012 keynote. But DICE is owned by EA. <laughs> Electronic okay. Arts? Really? Okay. Uh, but again, you can see that it's announced in 2018 and say, guys, you have a game in six years. Did they pull out out of the hat? Really? Because uh, six years of development for an Elder Scroll? That seems little. I don't know how much uh, time they needed on Skyrim. Somehow, I believe it was more than six years. I don't know. And they still have Starfield coming out too. So that'll that'll be out between True, now of course. and Elder Scrolls 6. So they still have to get that release out there. Um, yeah, yeah, a lot yeah, of these of games course, take, course. take years and years so and qu years. The, the question is because Bethesda, I don't know how big the studio was, but not that big, pretty they big. couldn't hire. Yeah, it's pretty big, but how many teams did they have working on this project? No, they, have own, they are owned by Microsoft. They can recruit more teams, maybe to work on different projects at the same time. I don't know, but Maybe the fact that they are on now can make a difference because money is the power of doing everything. <laughs> mm. Okay, so yeah, the Elder Scrolls Online is it's the first project of Zenimax Online Studios. Uh, and then they... Bethesda is just the publisher, not the developer. Uh, okay, it's like Niantic for Pokemon, I guess. So Zenimax is... Uh, yeah, yeah, so... Yeah. 